try this again. I don't know what the problem is. Shane, can you hear me? Thumbs up, thumbs down, something. There you go. Any chance you can hear me now? I can hear you. Can you, you hear can? me? Yes. Sweet. Am I sideways? Yep. <laughs> Got to turn uh, the other way. If I turn it the other way, <laughs> all right, it's fine. If my if my camera dies, it dies, I guess, because I can't plug it in that way. <laughs> <laughs> Can you turn it all the way upside down? And leave it plugged in. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hopefully it stays alive. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> all right, we're gonna figure this out, Bob. If you see this. We severely need your help getting this live stream stuff set up because I thought I had it squared away. I had external mics going. I had all of it. I thought I was cooking tonight. And, uh, yeah, I'm telling you. And so now we are back to phone audio once again. Yep. I guess if it works, it works. So we'll, uh, we'll crank it along. But welcome to the live edition of Point Man Podcast. I'm Zach. I'm here with What's Luke that? tonight, and uh, we're talking about friendship. Friends. Hilarious the way this has kind of worked out as we were kind of preparing and talking about uh, this. We both kind of went to our own corners and uh, came up with how we thought this should be discussed and broken down. It was so funny to me when you came back, and you would come from, like, this perspective of how to be a good friend yep. and, like, what it means to be a good friend i immediately went to this perspective of like how to overcome the bad friend in your life you know what that looks like and what that means so i think it's hilarious that that is the two points of view that we come from yep. oddly enough it works out that seems to be how we come at most things that we talk about sure <laughs> even down to the people that we like to listen to on podcasts and stuff uh we have different ways that we look at those things i just thought that was kind of fun yes yeah, so Zach really enjoys uh, what's his name? Uh, Mind Shift podcast. Mind Shift, Mind yeah. Shift, and I, I, I do not like Mind Shift podcast at all. <laughs> I, I watched about twenty minutes of it. And I'm like, I can't listen to this anymore. I don't like it. And then the exact opposite. I really enjoy the Craig Rochelle like leadership podcast. And Zach's like, I can't listen to Craig Rochelle. So I guess uh, it works. <laughs> but it's like uh, I think it's like the military and you mm. and like the app opposite, mm. uh, if you will, and me. Mm. Because Craig Rush feels very, like, systematic, mm -hmm. and Erwin McManus is very much, like, creative and uh, just kind of philosophical a little bit. And so <laughs> I think it's hilarious that that's how that goes, too. But it's the way we approached the topic of friendship and what we were looking at and wanted to talk yeah. about on tonight's live episode. And where better to do a topic of friendship than on Facebook, where everybody is friends. We're all friends. Friends. We're all pals. We're all friends, except for you as an avatar for your Facebook. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's a funny story. I only use Facebook ever for just Facebook Marketplace. I don't have any friends on there. I don't use it at all. So it's kind of ironic. It's actually like, we're going to do a Facebook. And I'm like, I don't even have the app. I had to download the app. To <laughs> That's what I asked Facebook you if you even had it. <laughs> like, I don't have the app. I just get it on Safari and get on Facebook Marketplace. So it's funny. But it's funny. Uh, uh, Shane did comment and he said, uh, good cop, bad cop. So I guess we, yeah, said no doubt. Cop, <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've never seen an episode of the podcast, we do these about twice a week over on YouTube, um, is, or wherever you get podcasts, Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts. I don't know where all it goes, but they tell me it goes everywhere. So 
Uh, this is what we do. Uh, we get into topics. Uh, we look at them from the perspective of how it could be a benefit to, to men in their lives, um, how they raise their family, et cetera. And so um, if you're interested in, in seeing more of these and what we do and what we talk about, head over to YouTube. It's that church, or excuse me, TC Point Man over on YouTube. Um, and it's the TC Point Man podcast, wherever you get podcasts. We've done, uh, I think this is 20 that's going to be out hmm. and we've done we've recorded like 24 hmm. of these so uh, we are hard at work finding ways to dive into god's word and impact the lives of men yep. um through the podcast as we are on uh, kind of that that in between time hmm. of our semester for point man at that church uh and so tonight we decided to bring it on facebook to to do give a little taste it's not as polished as they are normally when we're no. in the same room uh, with one another and we've got I'm, an I'm awesome it might not team be of as, editors. So. It might not be as polished there either. So it's probably about the same. That's true. Yeah. But at least when James and all the guys have with camera and audio skills get a hold of them, they tend that's to true. look and sound good at least. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> well, very cool. So let's kick it off. Topic of friendship. Do you want to go good or bad first? Uh, you like your good news first, your well, bad news first. No, let's do bad news first. I was I, I do like my bad news first, kind of get it out of the way. I do have a story to goes with uh, bad bad news, bad bad friends. Yeah, what you got? Um, if I can kick kick it off with a story. So yeah. <laughs> I was telling Jason, like I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell a story on the podcast tonight about a story you've never heard before. So so she's gonna be listening and she's gonna hear it for the first time as well. So it's new for a lot of years. But uh, I think we're past the point of uh, what's it uh, when you can't get in trouble for the law anymore. What's the what's uh, the, the statute of limitations? Statute of limitations, yeah, exactly. So that's uh, that's how you know you're on the bad friend side is whenever yes. you know that term. Exactly. So I was saying <laughs> I was in high school and uh, I had different. Uh, I've always had the core group of friends, but then every once in a while in high school, like I'll hang out with a different group of uh, friends just from like you know a couple months at a time, just hang out with different people, just coming in out of my life. But I was hanging out with this uh, certain two guys that I, I liked hanging out with at the time. It was probably maybe tenth grade, I would say in high school and uh they were just hanging out one night and i feel like you always get in the most trouble and then there's nothing going on yeah. and there's nothing happening it's like that's the spot where you're the most in trouble um so i wouldn't i wouldn't say they're necessarily they were bad friends but they were just not great influences yeah. we'll say that <laughs> so i was hanging out with them probably the whole summer of my 10th grade year i believe uh, off and on and then one night it was fourth of july and so fireworks things were it wasn't on fourth of july but it was like you know june leading up to july fourth of july all the fireworks stands were open. And so we're like, oh, let's just go buy some fireworks and shoot them or whatever. So we had nothing else to do. It's just the three of us. And they're all around the same age, guys. And uh, so we get in the car. Uh, one of my buddies is driving. I'm in the back seat. And we go buy fireworks, normal fireworks, and uh, just get back in the car. And we start driving off. And then <laughs> we drive down the street. And we drive back past the fireworks stand. And one of my buddies, not knowing what the heck he was doing, just lit a small firework and just chucked it out the window beside the, oh, no. I mean, we're not, we're not really beside it, but like close to the vicinity of this fireworks thing. It was like a pop, one of those like little TNTs. Yeah. Oh, and then it's like not going to do anything. And so it was like just throughout the window and they started driving off. And the guy, we can see as we were driving off, he starts to run out of the fireworks thing, gets in his car. And as we're driving the road, he can see him like way back and he's driving like a hundred miles an hour he catches up with us and is driving behind us and so he is flashing his lights blaring his lights honking his horn trying to get us to pull over and we're like we're all gonna die we're gonna get shot we're gonna get killed he's probably gonna call the cops we're all going to jail my life is ruined forever so uh ended up so we're just we're freaking out like one of my buddies like i got a knife if he tries to do something else, we're gonna we're gonna stab him or whatever and I was that's like, how you know what? you're in trouble already i was like what am i doing like wh why am i in the situation that i'm in right now and i feel like a lot of times in life you can get yourself in that situation just by hanging out with people you know you shouldn't be hanging out with so we get we finally pull over because we're like we don't know what to do he's followed us for like 30 minutes as we're just driving flying down back back roads <laughs> and uh so we pull over and we're like all right well so we're gonna figure out what's about to happen he gets out and he starts just screaming at us like, you could have blew up our whole family. You could have, you could have just killed the whole city of Gravel Ridge. And we were like, oh, crap, okay, it's my bad. We're sorry. He's like, all right, I called the cops. But then I told them not to come. We're like, did you actually call the cops? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they don't come when you call yeah, them. I was like, you call them and then you call them back and say, no, I'm good. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's how it works. But 
anyway, so we, we were freaking out, shaking. And so, like, he just leaves and goes back. And so, like, after that night, I'm like, I probably should not hang out <laughs> with, these, <laughs> with these guys again. Uh, good guys. I think they – I don't really have not caught, caught up with them. don't really know what they're doing, but hopefully they're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, but. Yeah, I uh, it, throughout my life I've had a knack for finding the rougher of the crowds of people mm. um, to, to to be a part of. A, maybe it was training uh, for comfort and uncomfortable situations, mm. or I don't know what you want to call it. Um, we'll, I'm gonna spin it for the good. Um, okay. We're gonna call it that. But yep. yeah, whenever I was scrolling through the list of, we have a list of topics that we just mm. kind of we update when yep. things happen or when we come across scripture that we want to talk about. Um, and when I was scrolling through, I saw the, 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 actually the topic didn't say good friends, bad friends. It just said bad friends. I was bad like, friends. yeah, that's yeah. a great one for Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about bad friends. Hmm. Um, I immediately jumped when I thought about the, the idea of bad friends to the story of, of Jesus telling Peter to get, whenever he's talking to him, Jesus, or excuse me, Peter says, uh, or in Matthew 17 verse 22, it says, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, hmm. which uh, it's kind of funny to me anyway. It's Peter yeah. like, getting on to Jesus. Uh, rebuke him saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Mm. And then verse 22, but he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me for you mm. are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Mm. Um, reason I went to this and the reason I jumped to this is a couple of, well, a couple of things. First is this idea of, of like even the closest mm. people, in our life could be a negative impact on our life yeah. and so like in that in your story those aren't the people that you were like the core group of people you were friends with but they were people yeah. near you but it could be that core group of friends that you have in your mm-hmm. life and i think as, as guys as we get older it to let go of a core group of friends who may be a bad influence gets tougher and tougher because it becomes harder mm-hmm. and harder to establish a core group of friends um, and whenever I think about this, I mean, Peter is in this uh, mission with Jesus and he's walking through this, this whole uh, situation with Jesus as he's walking to um, the cross. And um, even in this moment, he's like, no, 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 you're, you think you're doing good. You think you're doing what's right for me, but your mind's in the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to do and fulfill the mission that God has, has given me and what is it's his will on this earth for me. And you're trying to be in the way of that. You're, mm-hmm. you're standing between me and what God intended for me to fulfill in my life. It wasn't that he was even necessarily trying to be bad, but I think we have to be discerning, uh, to use a, a churchy word, um, <laughs> about, about friends, about good friends, yep. or especially about bad friends in those situations. Yep. Um, I could tell you a million and one stories similar to what you've told, uh, told about the fireworks and for whatever reason. <laughs> Because as we grow, people who have similar interests to us, we will make certain kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, like birds of a feather flock together. Type. Yeah, but yeah. you'll make like, a, uh, my words are leaving me, like uh, he, you'll let some things happen, some things occur hmm. because you want to stay close hmm. to those people. What is that yeah. called? You'll make a, uh, you're talking about just like fitting in with the crowd. Yeah. Type, but it's, crowd. you make exceptions to your standards, mm. even if your standards are given by God and your lifestyle yep. should be set in those standards. You'll make some exceptions mm. to those standards to remain close to this group of people because it's just concessions. Yeah. That's it. Shane. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Appreciate it. Yeah. Concessions is a good one. Um, but you'll, you'll make those concessions so that you can, you can stay close to those people. Um, you'll hear it all the time. Like, Oh yeah, we want to move out of this lifestyle, but all of my friends are still the, the, the party and friends, you know, it's like, so that's, I've been friends with them forever. Um, I'll hear my kids say this at times. He'll be like, yeah, I've been friends with him since I was nine years old. And it's like, (laughs) (laughs) maybe at nine, he was okay. But at 18, he's, you know, on his way to prison. The same for us as adults. It's like, we want to make those concessions. Mm -hmm. Shout out Shane. Um, To, to those standards. And when we look at this scripture and when this is happening, you know, it, this is someone that's close to Jesus and he's standing in his way for the will 
to fulfill his mission and purpose here on earth. Hmm. Um, and at times we will allow those friends and we'll make those concessions and we'll stay close to those people that we've been close to for a long time. And they will keep us from yeah. fulfilling uh, the mission and vision that God has for our life here on, on, on earth. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I wanted to talk about two things that you just talked about. The first one is I wanted you to read that uh, the get behind me verse one more time, because I've heard yeah. that probably a million times. Never really actually sat down and studied it, but if you, if you don't mind just reading that one more time, I, was, I got something to say about yeah, that. Yeah, Matthew <laughs> 17, 23, but he turned and he said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. So when, when, you, when you hear Jesus say that to Peter, do you think he's actually talking to Satan himself? Or do you think he's just saying like, you're on the other, t you're acting like the other team right now. You need to chill out and stop, stop acting like the other team. Mm. What, what are your thoughts yep. on that? <laughs> um, it's a great, great question. I don't know if he's necessarily talking directly mm. to Satan. Um, mm. I don't want to speak out of turn yeah. without studying more, but I think he's speaking to the, the mm. opposition. Uh, the ops, as the kids like to say. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. To his but, mission, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I was going to say, like, I've heard, I've heard my dad say it sometimes because he'll be like, you offer him, like, a piece of cake when he's on a diet, he'll say, get behind me, Satan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, like, kind of funny. It's, like, he's not saying you're actually Satan, but it is, like, a very powerful, like, statement. You call somebody Satan, you're like, whoa, snap. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a big accusation. But mm -hmm. in reality, I don't think he's actually, like, this is the Satan, this is the devil you're talking about. But, like, hey, you're you're – you're talking along the lines of the enemy's line. So like you need to chill out, turn around, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, get on my side and not be on the other side. So I thought that was cool. Um, it this, could be, it, I mean, you could be in context, you know, you're talking about deceiver hmm. or someone who's attempting to deceive yep. um, and get in the way <laughs> to, to take it a step further off of opposition. Yes, opposition, but I think it's more deeply like you don't even know you're, what mm. you're doing, you're yep. getting in the way of God's will mm. um, and what my mission is here and how grand this is. You know, it seems like a big deal that this this pain, suffering is going to befall on on him. And so, right. as his friend, he's probably thinking, <coughs> "Excuse me, he's got to be thinking." I would be thinking, I would be thinking this if it was my friend. It's like, no, we got to figure out how to solve this. Yep. Like, we got to figure out how to get you, you. Like, you got these. You can do some cool stuff. Jesus, like, <laughs> let's not, let's not do this, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, so, so I wanted to talk about the, talking about having a group of bad friends. Like if you are in that situation and you have it, um, I feel like I have an advantage of being in the military of where like, there's certain spots where I was uh, stationed where I did run with the, like a bad, like a, a bad crowd, but like a crowd that wasn't following Jesus and like just live for the party life or live with a, a certain, not, you know, Jesus Christ, like, and so I was running with those crowds at certain bases I was stationed at. But I feel like I don't know how like normal people do it. But like whenever I changed bases, I like, like no one knew who I was. I guess it could be the same thing as like if you're in high school and you're going to a new high school, you can change who you are mm -hmm. in that time. And I don't know how you would do that um, and like say like I'm a Christian here, and people are like, oh, he's a Christian. You know, we don't know any different. We don't know his past. We don't like you can check his face. Look, if he has one, but <laughs> we don't know if this guy is a bad guy. So I was, and yeah. time, like all, it was kind of weird. Like all three of the different places I was stationed at, I was like rolling with the crowd I shouldn't have been. Got a little bit better. People know, like he does go to church on Sundays, but he's still drinking with us, you know, on Saturday night. And then the like the third place I got stationed, they're like, okay, this guy, I like changed my everything about him. Like I have a fresh start. I can start over. I can be more Christ like at this new place kind of like, I don't know, like a reset switch. I don't know if there's like a, for regular people, people not in the military, like <laughs> what that is, or if you could do that. I don't know if you have a, maybe an example or tip or trick to help them. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's, <coughs> it's comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time, mm -hmm. and you eventually just have to take a leap. Yep. It's comfortable in the fact that you know that you're made new in, in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. So like whenever you take that step and you give your life to him and you are, are made new in him, then you are a new creation. So your life is not what it used to be any longer. You have boldness and confidence in that. So whenever you go out to live your life, you're living it in a new way. You're a new thing. Yep. Right. It's uncomfortable though, because those people still know who you were. They right. still know what you did. You're still friends on Facebook. They, all of those things are true, yep. but you have to, to understand that the power and the boldness that comes from that relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus is so much greater than whatever it is 
that that those people could hold on to and whatever that it shouldn't even be an embarrassment no. but it, it it that uncomfortableness no. of, of like they're going to think the hypocrisy in that person right yes and 100%. they might yeah. but at the same time you you have an incredible opportunity by the way that you're living your life new to impact them in a positive way. Yeah. I was thinking like, if I did in those, in my first duty station, if I was like, okay, all of a sudden I'm going to be different now and change. I feel like, like you're saying, I think like they would, I would say in my mind that they're going to judge me and not be my friend. So like, then I wouldn't have any friends to hang out with at all. So I was like, it's, it's a tough situation to like, if you're in that life to get out of it. And I feel like it's a, it's a hard road, but I say it's definitely something to, try to climb out of if you can, yeah. because it's like, if you're hanging out with them, you're going to do the same things that they're doing, no matter what. Uh, there was a statistic that I heard. I think Pastor Scott's even talked about. It. It's like, you basically do whatever your your five closest friends are doing. It's, uh, yeah. It's the, you're an average of your five best friends. It's like, a right. yeah. So like, if I'm hanging out with those guys on the weekend, I'm going to be doing what they're doing. I'm not going to be sitting there like in the corner, they're all partying and you're just sitting there. Yeah. Like, oh. you're, feel, you're fooling yourself. If you think yes, you're exactly. going into that situation sure. and you're not. So I, I like think you got, for, you for me, practically, I had to just make a split. So mm -hmm. it was just like, hey, we're not, I'm a different mm -hmm. life. Yep. This is not even the same thing. So there was a, a period, a stretch, I think for every person it's different, mm -hmm. where you're just not, I'm not doing it. I'm not going, I'm not a part of it, I'm not talking. Like, I got to separate, I got to reset. <laughs> Excuse me, I got like a cough going on. <laughs> reset your life. Now, I, there's some of those people that I talk to. We have a, a mutual friend um, who I was in fraternity with and, and had relationships with, who I'm friends with again. And I talk to uh, regularly now. But there was a stretch where we didn't even talk. Um, and it was – both of us were kind of working through and resetting our lives in a, a different way. Um, and we needed that break. We needed that time, that split to, to reset, to separate, to evaluate those friendships. Um, and some were, you know, we were able to, to return to some, you just aren't, uh, some people are just, you know, it's not inside of that, that, that friend circle you're going to call to do stuff yeah. anymore. Not that you don't love them, not that you don't care, not that you don't want to, to yeah. show them, um, the love of Jesus. And you can do that in a, a myriad of ways, but, yeah. um, as far, uh, as far as being someone you're going to call to go do something with, you're probably going to skip that. I think some people too can set boundaries of what they do. It's like, yeah. okay, we're not going to go to this party but hey if you want to go grab a cup of coffee we can do that um and it's uh it's hard i know for me one of the hardest things was i wanted i never had anyone who uh when i made a grand transition in my life and was made, found that new life and given to me by him by jesus and what that looked like i never had anyone who was um aggressive like negative about the fact that i did it but i did find that people were just hard to understand why yeah. at times and like they yeah. weren't willing to change the way that they acted or interacted and so that became harder for yeah, me for sure like you take someone to something at church and they were just you know like a jerk or would do something when you're like ah oh, you can't do that like no we got to stop that <laughs> yeah like, that's not we don't do that here <laughs> um well but that that was harder for me than than actually just separating um, and it, it helped because I had my wife hmm. so I, it wasn't like I was physically alone um and then right. spiritually emotionally I had Jesus so we talked about that on a different episode, but you're not that's alone awesome. anymore. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so like another one of the things that like whenever you're, it's, it's exciting and it's really awesome. If you ever get the chance to like, if you are separated from that friend that you think is a bad example, and then like you're leading this life and then all of a sudden something happens in their life and they're changed. Like, it's such an awesome thing to like reunite yeah. and like, Hey, we're, we're bros. Yeah, <laughs> What's yeah. up? I feel like that's really cool. Um, I feel like it has happened to me in my life before. It was like, you know, I feel like, you just got to leave them alone. Like they're in the, you could say like, some people say like they're, they got to live it right now to get, get themselves out of it. They got to work through some things. And it, I feel like it, it does happen a lot of times where like, yeah, you got to separate stuff from that friend, but eventually something's going to happen in their life. God's going to change them. They're going to have an interaction with God. Um, and then they're going to, life's going to be changed. And then like, Hey, we can kick it again because mm -hmm. we're both on that same track and we're both leading and looking at Jesus first. So. Awesome. I think that's a twofold or two places that we have some, some information on, on that. Uh, we've talked about that. Uh, one is if you go to the YouTube channel and scroll back, there's a series we did a couple of years ago called Man on Fire <laughs> um, in Point Man. And part of that was about living a life that people can see your relationship with Jesus without you speaking it. Um, <laughs> now, 
not that that's the only way, but that was part of the conversation. Um, I think it's week three. If you go back and watch that, that's where we talk about that. Um, and then uh, the episode with your dad, he pointed out, you know, like in his life, whenever he was at work or was, or wherever he was, when he was around people who were not believers, he would become the person that people came to when hardship would hit their lives. Sure. Yeah. And that was an opportunity for him to, to essentially minister to people um, on the fly a yeah. little bit in their hardship because they knew that he was living. They knew he had that faith and that relationship. And so he was able to, to speak some love and some life into those people who were going through hard things. Um, and that's a, that episode, if you go to the YouTube, it just looks really ridiculous. We're all wearing headbands yeah. and like look for the, t-shirts. So look for the funny um, but, no, you'll see it. <laughs> a great conversation in that episode um, about that, about li- living this life that like, when you're in these spots where people are not believers, where people are not uh, walking the same direction, the same path that you are, but you can be that light for them in their hardship and in their tough times. So yeah. go check that out. Sure. Um, all right. Do you want to dive into what the Bible says about being yeah. a good friend? I give you some good news. Good news. Okay. okay. I got you. All right. So if you would, if you're listening out there, pull out your Bible or your apps or whatever, and uh, turn to Mark 2. Deuce. We don't normally uh, tell people to turn to their Bibles on the other yeah, the podcast. So yeah, I got mine right here. It's a little new. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Speaking of good the... friends slash mentors slash awesome people, um, I got a new Bible today by Pastor Eddie. Nice. Shout out and uh, it's pre-highlighted. And I told him I got the cheat codes. So oh, he highlighted himself. Uh, yeah, he, he it was his. So he he has stuff highlighted throughout. I was like, that's like getting a cheat code Bible. <laughs> cheat code, <laughs> pound pound, circle circle, yeah. square square. <laughs> <laughs> a limited and then, life. <laughs> and then you unlock, yeah, unlock faith. Boom, yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so all right, so now everyone's probably turned to Mark too. Um, it's the talking about the story about where Jesus heals the paralyzed yeah. man. And uh, it's three spots in the gospel. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, and it's in Luke. John doesn't have it for some reason. I don't know why. So uh, if you read it, it says, When Jesus returned to Capernaum seven, several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. So Jesus is just in a house, and there's just like 100 people in there. He can't breathe, can't move. Um, while he was preaching... God's word with them. Uh, I do want to point out a point. He said, preaching God's word, Old Testament stuff, I assume. That's what he's talking about, like Moses' law and those kind of things. So he just yeah. says, Jesus I mean, was preaching God's the word. The New Testament wouldn't have been written, so yes. Yeah, so it's like, you can't preach from what he's talking about right now. I thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> uh, okay, so then it says, uh, verse number three four men arrived carrying, next page, so, uh, next, a paralyzed man on a mat. I want to come back to that four men uh, later on, but uh, it says they couldn't bring him to Jesus just because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. So the first thing that stands out to me, I'm going to read the rest of it in just a little bit, but the four guys is really, <laughs> really stands out to me is like, should we have four friends, three friends? It's talking about like, should we have a core group of four guys that you're hanging out with and they're helping you out and helping you bring you to Jesus? I don't know if that's something that uh, you thought about. I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if there's, if you have four guys that are good Christian solid men. I know I think I have four guys. Zach, you're probably one of them. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> and so uh, the ratio is four to one, right? So I feel like you can you say like, oh, I shouldn't hang out with this person because he's a, he's a bad f- friend. But if, he's your one friend that is seeing you and your three other friends. Maybe that's something the Bible is like, Hey, it's all right to have that one. That's the one you're trying to get up. You take, and you're trying to drag him to Jesus to whatever you got to do to push him through the roof of the house, push him down into the roof and let him see Jesus. So I just thought that was kind of cool. The four to one ratio. I don't think it's, I don't know if that's a hard set in stone rule, but <laughs> I think it's a, uh, I don't think it's a hard set in stone rule. Um, <laughs> But I do think when you think about just practically, if you're around a bunch of people who are wanting to do the right thing and walk the right way on the right path, you're going to end up, it's the same as if you're around the negative influences, like you're going to talk, act, live differently. And those are the people that you're around versus, yeah. I feel like you kind of think of like the mat that he was on had to have the four corners and he was in the middle and they had to pick up three people couldn't do it. Two people probably couldn't do it. 
had to take all four. I just thought that was kind of a cool analogy. So four friends that took him and drug him to Jesus. So he said, my, my child, your sins are forgiven. Some, fear, uh, some teachers of religious law who were sitting there um, thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up and pick up your mat and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus returned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Um, I do want to read that next verse in a second, but I want to go back and read uh, or see number, verse number five. Yep. Uh, I wanted to, so what, what is your thoughts on this verse? I think I have my thoughts on it, but I just want to see what you think. It says, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are your thoughts on whose faith actually healed that man from his paralyzedness? Paralysis. Paralysis. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly, I think it's, it, it shows that he's talking about the four who bring mm -hmm. him um, to the yeah. I don't think it, that's to discount that the man had faith that he could heal him either. No, but he said that these guys wanted this man to be helped and seen by Jesus so much. He saw their faith and he was like, well, I'm going to pursue this guy as hard as I can. And I'm going to mm -hmm. heal him because of their faith, the guy's friends. So I feel like you can have that one friend that you're praying for. You're taking to church. You're saying, I'm texting him and saying, you know, Bible verse. Yeah. No, Zach doesn't like that. I just don't like <laughs> only using the Bible verse. It's not that I think the Bible verse is bad. Be, being that example for him, making him watch the Point Man podcast. Yeah. <laughs> just everything you can to, to help that man or help that guy or person to come to Jesus. I think that is what we need to be doing. Um, and Jesus will see that your faith and your friends are trying to bring that one guy in and he'll make a change in that guy's life. Well, there's, I just there's, thought it was really. I mean, there's reward in in us doing what we can to bring other people to know him. Yeah. So, to to say that it would have taken just the the man, the paralyzed man's uh, faith to be healed would be incorrect because there is that there is that power in um, in reward in in our faith and in our work for him and our bringing yeah. uh, people to know him and to what that looks like. So yeah, I think that's I mean that's what you're seeing kind of play out here. Yeah. I, I think in in our life in today's terms, if you look at something like this verse and you want to apply it, I think it is that 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 work that is that constant faith that I mean and understand too. <laughs> if you and three of your good friends have a buddy who needs to come to know Jesus and you are are constantly praying, constantly bringing, constantly have faith that it'll work but don't be upset when it doesn't work on your yes. timeline yes like that is a just, yep go ahead no, a really good point and i was gonna say like how long were they friends with this paralyzed guy yeah. before who knows they, i mean i'm sure they were praying for him i'm sure they were in his house with them helping him out as best they can and all of a sudden they get their chance and one day one day that guy's life got changed so it's like if you have those friends that you're like, man, I don't know if this guy's ever going to come to the Lord. I don't know if I'm what I'm doing is useless at all, use, useful at all. One day, possibly they will, you will be able to help them and be able to show them Jesus and he will change their life. Yeah. I mean, but we don't, I mean, we don't have any context for how long they knew him. Right. No, they could have picked him up on the way in. Yeah. They're just like, here's this random dude. Let's just <laughs> track him and throw him. I mean, I, I don't know how many people are picking up the no. random paralyzed man. Yeah, but, so I was thinking ahead. about I was thinking about that. I was like, if you get a chance to see Jesus and you don't care about that guy that's in the back, you're not gonna drag him up to the roof and then drop him down and like you know, like I'm gonna see Jesus. I don't care about this mm -hmm. guy, but they had to be friends with him. They had to be. I mean, I don't know, it doesn't say, but that's like okay. uh, I think that's that's a, a good point of like if you look at celebrity <laughs> of faith versus like person of faith, it's like, you know, if you're so excited to see this person or like you know you look at other world religions and they have like these places they go mm. these places they have to go to worship or these places or times or things like there's a, a mechanic to it yeah. um, you would have that type of like it's so important to go and see jesus versus in our faith we have this with the holy spirit we have this ability to to worship him at all times there's not a time a place uh, a uh, 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 city in the world we have to be in to do it and a direction we have to face to do it um we can just worship him and yep. so that that 
ability to have faith in that relationship and this interaction doesn't make us have to like walk up and and like touch him and be in his presence in this very physical way um so maybe that's part of what we when it, we think about it in that way it's like oh let me go see jesus like yeah. oh let me go see lebron like <laughs> you know <laughs> but that's not that's not what faith is that's not what our faith is about for sure um but that's what celebrity is about all right so verse number 12 i want to talk about <laughs> Not, not really part of one of my points. I just thought it was super interesting. Yeah. Um, it says, well, number 11, says, verse 11 says, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Uh, verse 12 says, the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked that's out. A, that's your version that says that. To stand off. <laughs> what, what, what does the ESV say? I didn't even check it. He rose, rose up. up. Rose up. Okay. Rose, rose up, jumped up. I just thought it was cool because, like, who knows? This guy was probably paralyzed his whole life. So, like, does he have the muscles to jump? And Jesus was like, I don't yeah. care how far long you've been bad or how long, how far along you've been paralyzed or away from me. You come in contact with me, I'm going to instantly change you. And so far, not as it just like barely got up, got to his feet, yeah. and then got out the door. He jumped up. I just thought that was really cool. But, I mean, that's kind of like when we talked about like how do we overcome the negative friend or the bad mm. friend, you know, you're made new. Mm. It's not a, a trickle process. It's a an immediate reaction. You're a different yeah. thing. You're a different person when you accept Jesus and uh, we're talking similar, a very physical example yeah. of a similar situation here where it's like, I have faith in Jesus. Jesus healed me and I am able to, to go and to do and to walk and to, it's not like uh, he trained for six months right. after Jesus, you know, to get up. <laughs> it was yeah. like, no, you're different. Get up and go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't wait around. Right. I thought that was really cool. And like, like, it's kind of a good similarity of like when you meet Jesus and you strip off those old sins that weigh you down, you're a light as a feather. I feel like in that moment, you're like all of these sins have been weighing me down for all these years that I've just been chasing other things, worldly things. As soon as you strip those off, it's easy to jump. I feel like because you're light. You know, you got Jesus and he's there to help you out, put you up. But yeah. that's a different point. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about, if you finish that verse, and so he grabbed his mat, he walked through the stunned onlookers. And they were all yeah. amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. So, like, not only was that one guy healed and met Jesus and it changed his life forever, people are going to see that one friend that you've been praying for change his life and that you've been helping and working on and beating down his door about, about you know, he needs to be going to church. He needs to be, you know, reading his Bible, praying, being with his friends that are Christians. And they're going to see his life change and people are going to be stunned and amazed. Like, I didn't think that guy would ever come to Jesus. I didn't think that guy would ever walk off his mat. I didn't think that guy would ever get up and jump up and run out of this house. And then you're like, what made that happen? And you can point to like, I didn't make that happen being his friend. He met Jesus and that's how he got up and walked and became a Christian. Yeah. So I thought that was cool. For us, we, you know, we, we live in a, a, a cool time because we get to do this. I mean, we're sitting on, you know, Facebook. I, who knows how many people will see this whole thing or a yeah. clip of it at some point, but more than would have if I did if we didn't get on here. Sure. If one person sees it and there's an impact that they have in their life, well, we have this opportunity to, to to show what Jesus has done for us all the time. We could do, use social medias and things and our, our lives when we're out in the world to show a myriad of things, but yeah. – we have the opportunity to, to share the gospel with people through these avenues and through these metrics. Um, I think they're extremely valuable for that reason. But I mean, that's what he did. That's what we're talking about. I mean, he got up and he walked through the crowd. The crowd has never seen anything like this. When we come out of those relationships with those bad friends, we have an opportunity to be something different and to show that and to act yeah. different and to, to live differently. And we can do that out loud yeah. um, with our life, but we can also do it on online yeah. through avenues like this. Um, yeah. And to do it with some boldness, to do it with some some joy and some um, excitement to share the gospel with people that we get the opportunity to to not be timid by it, no matter where you where you come from or what you've done. Some of the most incredible people I've ever talked to have had some of the most colorful lives, you know, prior to coming to know Jesus. Yeah, that's one of the things I was going to talk about. Um, I was going to say, like, if you right now, quote unquote, are the bad guy, bad friend, um, I have I have been that in my life before I know in the past, like if you met me back 
when I was a little bit younger, you'd have been like, this guy is not the guy I need to be hanging out with. Like there was people who probably said that about me that I met. So like chase, chase after the good friends and separate yourself from bad friends when you are the bad influence on people. I would just say like, just, you know, be different, you know, be bold of like exactly like Zach was saying, be, don't be, don't continue to be down that life, you know, change, yeah. try to. And be, be excited by it. <laughs> Uh, yep. Don't be fearful for it. That's uh, it's for the better, and it's a positive move in the right yep. direction. That's what you know. That's one of the. It's not the reason, but it's one of the value, great values of, of being involved in church. Not just attending, not just walking through the doors, but you know, getting involved with a, a group or a team at the church and serving. Um, you're going to be surrounded by other people who are are seeking after God in an incredible way, like like you want to and like you are that's how you build that community uh, we've talked about it on episodes before but like when when you're going through things in your life and whenever you you need those community that community of people if they don't know you if they don't know that you're going through those hard times if they don't know that you know yeah. these situations are happening in your life then they can't be there for you it's yeah. not a magic like wave a wand and you get a community of believers around you you have to be involved and plugged in and surrounded about other people who believe in, in, and are seeking after Jesus in the same way. Point Man is a great place for men in that way. Yeah. Um, it's it's That's what's, why we're here. It's to impact the lives of men in an incredible way for Jesus to spread the gospel to as many men as we possibly can. Um, and through that, that, we build community of men who are doing that and who are seeking it in their own way. I mean, it's a, a group of dudes who are outside of the fact that we all love Jesus. There's people that I would probably not ever hang out with, and they would never hang out with me. But we all love Jesus. And you talking about me? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I found out you weren't my friend a few weeks ago. So <laughs> I didn't know if you were going to bring that up or not. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, we had dinner at uh, Zach's house the other night, and uh, told somebody was like asking me about Zach. And I'm like, yeah, you guys, you and Zach are friends. I'm like, yeah, I think we're friends. <laughs> and Zach was like, what the heck? We are friends. I'm like, okay. We're friends. <laughs> I'm I'm willing it into existence. I'll grab a corner of the mat. And we'll carry you up to the yeah. top. Oh, okay. I think I can get two corners. I think I can get two corners if I get the the leg. Okay, so we just need two. We just need two. Yeah, more. We just need two more. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So, <laughs> well, cool. You got anything else you want to dive into? No, I think uh, that's that was all my uh, not my points. I do have a couple more points, but they're on my phone, and uh, I don't have my phone on me, so it's all right. So we'll get them in another episode. <laughs> we are going to figure out this live stream thing <laughs> to where we can do it from computers because we both use our phones for notes and stuff when we're talking. Yep. Um, and this is the second one where we've had to go to phones because we couldn't get the computers to work right. <laughs> we're going to figure that out before we do another one of these so we won't have the hiccup um, leading into an episode. But if you've never checked it out before, head over to YouTube. Uh, for the video edition, TC Point Man on YouTube, or check out the TC Point Man podcast on every avenue outlet. Um, if this is your first time ever seeing Point Man on anything and you saw the stream, welcome. Very cool. Hello. Um, make sure you like the, the Facebook page. We do have events and stuff that will be around the corner. We have a new semester that's right around the corner. Yep. Uh, so make sure you like the Facebook page so that you can stay up to date with everything going on on point man um we would love to have you love to get you involved with what we're doing at that church and with point man through that church so yeah check out the podcast until next time uh i'm zach with luke good night see you